These are the harrowing accounts of thousands of people's lives as they faced incredible hardship. Children in the ghetto had no future. There was death penalty for teacher, parents and children if they were caught organizing or having lessons of any kind. Another chance to hear Voices from the Ghetto online from Saturday at bbcworldservice.com. This is Newsday with Nola McGovern and Alan Kasuja. The top story from our newsroom is Benjamin Netanyahu looks set to be re-elected as Prime Minister of Israel, but with a sharply reduced majority. We'll be live in Nigeria where over 20 people have been killed in two separate attacks suspect by suspected members of the Islamist group Boko Haram. And a 16-year-old American tells us why she is so worried about slut-shaming where images of teenage girls are shared online. But first, this news. BBC News with Jim Lee. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said he intends to build a broad coalition following his victory in a general election. His comments come after exit polls suggest that Mr Netanyahu's likud Betenu alliance has been returned to power but may have lost a quarter of its seats. Mr Netanyahu said his new government's top priority would be preventing Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. The North Korean government has reacted defiantly to a United Nations Security Council resolution tightening existing sanctions on the country. The statement from the foreign ministry said it would strengthen its military forces, including its nuclear deterrent. A Pentagon investigation has cleared the senior U.S. commander in Afghanistan, General John Allen, of inappropriate conduct in his exchange of emails with a Florida socialite, Jill Kelly. The messages were discovered as the FBI investigated threatening emails sent to Mrs. Kelly by Paula Broadwell, a former lover of the then CIA director, David Petraeus. The British Prime Minister, David Cameron, is due to make a long-awaited speech outlining the government, governing Conservative Party's policy on the European Union. Mr Cameron is expected to call for a renegotiation of Britain's relationship with the EU and the possibility of a referendum on membership of the organisation. A new study has found that glaciers in the Andes have shrunk by as much as 50% over the past 40 years. The research, published in the journal The Cryosphere, predicts many glaciers in the tropical Andes could melt away altogether. <coughs> Excuse me. A court in Thailand has sentenced the magazine editor to 10 years in jail for insulting the monarchy. Somyat Puk Sakasamsuk, who is also a prominent political activist, was found guilty of publishing two articles which infringed Thailand's strict Les Majest law. And a magistrate in Australia has dismissed charges against a goat named Gary, booked by Sydney police for eating flowers outside a museum. The police had argued that Gary's owner had acted recklessly in allowing a hungry goat to approach the flower bed. BBC News. Hello and welcome to Newsday with Alan Kasuja and Nula McGovern. And coming up, we'll be live in Nigeria, Kenya and South Africa. We'll also be talking in, to people, someone in Sudan, Mali and of course the African Cup of Nations. Matthew has a story from there today. Morning, Alan. Yes, Ivory Coast and Tunisia got victories in Group D yesterday. Today, it's the teams in Group A who come back.